just got done cutting off the hog rings off of this passenger seat and uh, peel this all back and you'll see that this has that factory uh, heavy-duty velcro instead of uh, the hog rings that hold it down into the contours of the uh, the seat foam so again this is a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing um, the new foams that I have um, actually have the uh, ridges or the uh, grooves already uh, formed into them uh, when they when they uh, made them this one's a little bit different and like I said this is a different style foam than what the uh, Monte Carlo or the El Camino has as far as a bucket seat so what I'm actually doing is only uh, I'm going to utilize the actual frame within this foam and kind of hard to see but there's a metal frame in here that is the same um, on most or all G bodies uh, everything I've researched shows it to be the same so I've got to remove all this foam from the seat frame and then apply the new foam to the old frame so that is the next step here. Uh, still have to strip the upper of the upholstery, which is basically a, a zipper. I don't know if you can see that. There's a zipper on the back side of this, and then there's a couple of pieces of hardware that have to come off and then once that upholstery comes off I can actually get inside here where the rest of the bolts are for the uh, seat hinge and uh, then I've got to remove the um, molding here for the upper um, or the uh, headrest and then this should come off and then I'll be able to get to the foam on this All right, what I'm doing here is actually separating the foam from the actual metal frame. getting this uh, foam separated from the seat frame and this foam on this one is molded around the I guess inner seat springs so I have to separate all this from the bottom side before I can pull it through to the top so I'm just kind of removing all this stuff to get it separate from the bottom.
can see the uh, wires from the bottom. You can see that. Anyways, takes a little bit of time to work this off and get it prepped for the uh, the new foams. Okay, just got done stripping the bottom base or frame. And I got most of it off. I'm not really worried about getting some of it off because I'm actually um, hoping that it'll help fill out the uh, upholstery a little bit better. So I'm leaving this backside on because also it has some sharp edges. And uh, that uh, puts a little bit of strain on the upholstery and it may, may tear. So I'm going to leave all that on there. But the basic frame is clear for the new foams to go in there and um, has these uh, plastic channels on the side, I guess, to keep the uh, foam from being cut into by the frame itself. And I'm actually swapping the, the base of this seat from passenger to uh, driver's side. So I've got a clip to pop off here and put over on this side because the frames are universal. Um, they have the same hardware on both sides uh, spot welded in. You can see where the um, seat tracks get bolted from the bottom. You see that? Same. And then on the sides, you've got the um, threads spot welded in on both sides. So it could be used for either passenger or uh, driver side. So I'm going to switch this over before I um, upholster it or put the upholstery kit on and uh, make sure that everything fits up the way it's supposed to when I put it back together. Okay, I'm going to do the top part of the seat now. Um, I've got to take the uh, upholstery off to get to the upper two bolts on this uh, heat uh, seat hinge. Also have to take off this molding piece for the headrest and the knob back here to recline the seat forward for the uh, access to the rear seat. So let me get started on taking that apart and uh, show you how to remove the foam from the upper seat frame. Notice these are long bolts. The two uppers, I believe, are both long. The two upper ones are, are long bolts, and the two on the bottom are staggered. This one's a long one, and the one down there is a short one. And I think that has to do with the fact that they don't want a bolt sticking too far in the lower part of it where most of the weight of the person is on, so it won't be sticking into their thigh. 
but uh, that was the same on both the passenger and the driver's side, so I'm pretty certain that's the way it's supposed to be factory, but you can see the hinge here. Everything looks like it's good, it's functioning. And now I have to do the same process with this, where I separate the foam from the metal frame. That way it's ready for the new seat foam that will go inside the frame. working this foam away from the frame takes a little bit of time and effort separating this so you don't hook into things like your sleeve for your headrest uh, I guess uh, shaft that comes down so just be real careful about that just work around it just be mindful of what's underneath the foam and take your time and eventually you get down to the frame which will then accept the new foam Okay, just got done stripping the top frame of the seat. And I just got it good enough to where when the new foams are placed inside the frame, it won't make it, you know, protrude in areas that it shouldn't. So I'll probably do a little bit more cleanup on this, but this should be good enough for fitting the new seat foams. And you can see here that the uppers are not universal that they are specific to each side so this one's got the arm that comes off of the uh, frame uh, the pivot arm so this is um, the passenger side by default and then here's the assembly for the uh, headrest to go in and or slide up and down and then this uh, bar that goes around for reinforcement Just tack welded all the way around so the uppers uh, I would say quite a bit more rigid than the lower um, for obvious reasons all right I'm gonna fit this uh, lower foam on the lower seat frame got it all stripped down pretty much to the bare metal. seat frame this came out of a uh, 85 I believe uh, yeah it was an 85 Pontiac Grand Prix and the foams were shaped differently than what would go in the 87 say 88 Monte Carlos pretty much uh, any of the G bodies the Chevrolet G bodies with uh, bucket seats um, so this has got a Kind of a cage on it to sit a little bit lower because you actually sat lower in the uh, 
the seat on the Grand Prix. So what, right now what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to build this up to where it has a little bit of uh, uh, basically resistance or upward pressure on the seat foam so there's not so much slop in it. Doing the upper section of the seat and I'm noticing on these uh, listings that there's double-sided tape that I'm pulling off because I don't want it to uh, give me any issues when I'm stretching it down to get it tight. Also, I don't know if you can see this, but these I had to cut because they were sewn in and I had to put my own uh, cord in there. I actually used some uh, data cable for uh, phones, which is, was about the right diameter to hold it down in these channels. And you can see there's wires that run through here that the hog rings go around this which is this tool and let's see if I can show you how to do this with one hand. So these go around this and this bends this in a circle around this cord that I have in here which locks into this metal rod going through the uh, foams and that gives you a nice clean um, uh, indention going down your upholstery makes it nice and uh, tight looking so anyways had to uh, cut this material back run my own cord through here on this part this part actually came with the cord or uh, piping whatever you want to call it and it's a lot like uh, heavy duty uh, weed trimmer line, but I opted to go with a little bit thicker cord here to make sure I get a nice straight line going down here. But what I've done so far is I started my hog rings up at the very top. So I've got one in on each side so I can get started. And I'm gonna work my way down here once I get to this point. I'm going to go across here and get that, and then I've got one more down here in this ridge, which is the second one here. And then at the bottom, there's actually a zipper. I don't know if you can see that, it zips everything up. But I'm just going to go down the line and ring this thing up and get everything as tight as I can. Another thing I'm doing is, you can see those marks that I've got there. I've tried to center the upholstery on the um, foam as best I could and make sure that I get these, I don't know if you can see that, hog, ring, hog ringed onto the uh, rods that go through the foam. So I'm working my way down. I just finished these on that, uh, I guess they call it a listing down in this channel. So, and I'm just working my way down here trying to get all these connected. And uh, hopefully it'll look straight and not wrinkled when it's done. Just got done uh, doing the rest of the uh, hog rings. All the way up to there, as you can see. And uh, got to pull this together and zip that up. But other than that, it turned out pretty good. I still got to steam it to get some of the wrinkles out. A couple wrinkles up here. But uh, all in all, it didn't turn out too bad. And you can see this just zips together. And then I've got to hog ring these in here. These, uh, I guess, listings, they call them. And uh, get it secured in here so it doesn't give me any grief later. 
But uh, after that, just a matter of uh, bolting the top to the bottom. And uh, piecing it all together. Got everything peeled back around the seat foam and now I've got to attach the uh, lower frame and then start pulling this tight around this way and a lot of these wrinkles should come out with a little bit of steam. I got some wrinkle right here that I need to work out. But as you can see when you pull this a lot of that will come out but I got everything centered the way I wanted. Just need to, like I said, work it out and uh, get it tightened around the lower seat uh, frame and see what it looks like when it's done. Okay, here's the uh, completed installation of the seats that uh, I reupholstered. And the uh, power seat base that I installed as well. So I've got it pretty well as far back as it'll adjust, but I'm a I'm a little bit on the taller side, I'm uh, about 6'1", so I ended up doing these plates to set the seat back a little bit further to give me a little more leg room. And uh, did the same in the back, but it gave me another about two and a half to three inches of uh, leg room clearance. Um, did not do that over on the passenger side. Uh, didn't need to. The uh, manual uh, seat adjuster rails go back far enough. So, anyways, it uh, turned out pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with it.